I guess that means that you have seen, I don't even want to imagine how many movies. Do you keep account of how many movies you've seen? No. No. I would watch, be, and the, I think I watch one a day. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour, yeah, I've got a Frenchie with me. I'm here with uh, Manon. She's actually, well, an entrepreneur, I can call you, working full time now and bringing French culture and French cinema to English speakers and expats like myself. So, my name is uh, Manon. I'm French. I grew up in Paris. And so I am the co-founder of an organization called Lost in Frenchlation. So it's something we created uh, with my partner, Matt, who's Australian and who doesn't speak French. Um, we created this three years ago when we realized that there were no movie theaters in Paris showing French movies with English subtitles, mm. which meant that all the non-French speakers were excluded from accessing French films. Including me. <laughs> <laughs> And we thought it was a real shame because um, we're in the country where cinema was born, we're in the city where the first ever screening happened, mm. um, we're in the country of the Cannes Festival and uh, the country in Europe where people go the most to the cinema. Yeah. So we just thought um, it should be part of the experience when you're an expat or a student on exchange or a visitor yeah. to be able to go to a movie theater and at least once in your life see a French film without the language barrier. Yeah. So that's what we do. We host screenings of French movies with English subtitles at independent cinemas in Paris. Uh, we have drinks before the film so that everyone can get the chance to meet. And we love to organize events around the movie. Anything the movie inspires us. It can be um, dance, music. We have comedy nights like the one you've been to. Yeah. So where can people find you? Uh, the best way is on Facebook, uh, Lost in Frenchlation, uh, and we also have a website, lostinfrenchlation.com, where you've got all the program and you can subscribe to the newsletter uh, to know about our upcoming events. Cool. I'll put all the links down below. And so I guess that means that you have seen, I don't even want to imagine how many movies. Do you keep account of how many movies you've seen? No. No. I would watch, be, And I think I watch one a day. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Wow. I've so, always been really passionate about this. And okay. So well into yeah. the thousands, basically. Yeah, I think so. So I couldn't think of anyone better to bring in for this video today, which is about the French movies you absolutely need to see before you die. We've actually got a, a gift for you. So for all of the Paris-based people watching this right now, we have loads of tickets to give away to Lost in French Relations events in Paris. So we have 10 of those tickets to give mm -hmm. away, right? So we've got 10 tickets to give away. Plus... Um, Manon is lovely enough to offer us this 100 movies you must see before you die poster. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's actually, yeah, like little little cutouts and you, you peel them back and it will reveal, oh hi, it will, <laughs> it will reveal the, the film you need to see before you die. So, wow, that's beautiful. I think there's two French films in it. There's Amelie and Antouchab somewhere. Oh yes. I'm There's really... also um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Okay. I don't know if you know that one. Yeah, I know that one. It's is American, it... but yeah. it's a French director. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So again, Paris-based people, if you want to know how to win the poster and, and you want to know how to get the free tickets to the Lost in French Relations events, watch till the end of the video and we'll explain everything. Yep. So, uh, what's the first film that you have for us today? Okay, so the first one is very special, but I picked it because I think it represents French humor quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's called Le Grand Détournement. It's also okay. known as La Classe Américaine. Okay. And so the story of the project is that in 1993, the Warner Company uh, was celebrating its 70th birthday. Mm -hmm. And so they gave access to all of their catalogs of film, which represented 30,000 films. And so the director of the movie The Artist, mm -hmm. Michel Azanavitus, he decided to combine excerpts of American films mm -hmm. by dubbing the American actors in French okay. and by saying something completely different <laughs> to what they're actually saying. And okay. the result is a kind of hilarious parody. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think they're also trying to celebrate American cinema by doing this and uh, kind of acknowledging the heritage this catalog represented. Yeah. Um, and I just think dubbing is really funny, you know, when I was yeah, a yeah. kid, I used to watch American films dubbed in French, but I didn't understand yet. And I was like, what is going on with their mouth? Yeah, Americans speak funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so what's the second one that you have for us? The next movie that you have to see before you die? Okay, so second one is uh, Lemum. The English title is Levy en Rose. 
Oh, okay, yeah. It's about the life of uh, Edith Piaf. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's with Marion Cotillard, and she's just amazing in this part. She won the Oscar and the César, which is the equivalent of the Oscars in France, yeah. uh, for this part. Um, also, I think it's interesting in the movie to see the evolution of Paris from the 20s to the 60s. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, and there's there's one scene in particular in the movie, so I'm not going to spoil if you don't know about the life okay. of Edith Piaf. Mm -hmm. She learns about a very tragic news and she's in her room and she's crying and then with a special effect she ends up uh, on the stage crying and singing and the oh. violins are playing L'Hymne à l'Amour. Oh wow, and so it just and is quite it moving. Always and always gives me goosebumps yeah. every time I watch it. Yeah, I mean for you, what are the big differences between French cinema and American cinema? <coughs> because I suppose France and the US are the two biggest producers mm -hmm. of cinema worldwide, yeah. but they're very different styles. Yeah, um, I think the originality of French films comes from the fact that um, there's more freedom given to the directors, I think, mm -hmm. in France, whereas mm -hmm. in the US, producers have more power over the films. Okay. So I think in Paris, uh, in France, we have more of a independent counter stream cinema. Yeah. Um, and I think we give less importance to the style than to the content. Okay. So there's a bit less action, things are less shown, mm -hmm. uh, so the spectator has to do a little bit more work to understand what's going on on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so the psychology is a little bit more complicated, it's not like black and white, but it's uh, many shades of grey, you know? Yeah, and I found that French cinema as well, I'm always frustrated at the end, the film just stops and you're like, okay, <laughs> what happens to those people? Like you get really yeah. invested in them and then you're like, oh. I think French cinema is closer to reality. Well, I feel like I can identify more to the characters, but mm -hmm. maybe that's because I'm French. I don't mm. know. <laughs> no, but they, they do. They, they take completely real life situations yeah. and they explore them. It can be a, a couple struggling. It can be, you know, just something. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, how did they keep me entertained and how did they keep my attention for two hours just now? Because we were literally just watching a couple fight, you know, yeah. or something like that, but it, it's quite impressive. And yeah. so um, what's number three then on the list? So number three, oh yeah, it's a movie you can watch if you really want to feel happy. Okay, um, It's It's um, Les Demoiselles de Rochefort. Okay. And it's probably the most cheerful film of all of French cinema history. Okay. Because I think we have a reputation of having quite depressing films. Gloomy. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because one day, one of our customers, they, uh, she sent us an email and she said, can you please program a film that doesn't make me want to hang myself? And I thought, maybe we have a problem here. <laughs> we should program more comedy. But this one is just, uh, it's like a Hollywood musical okay. that's set in France in the 60s. Um, there's Catherine Deneuve, do okay. you know this actress? Yes. She's yes. Uh, so beautiful in this movie mm. and uh, the music is great. Jacques Demy is very famous for musicals. Okay. And we also have uh, one director called uh, Christophe Honoré. Mm -hmm. uh, he made, for example, Les Chansons d'Amour. And uh, it's, it's, quite, it's like a musical, but it's just that they, they sing what they have to say. But it's different to American musicals. It's not like La La Land. No, yeah. no, definitely not. But La okay. La Land was inspired by Jacques Demy. Oh! Yeah, Damien Chazelle said that his in, well, some of his inspiration was from Jacques Demy. Okay, so yeah. on that note, what's number four then? Uh, number four is L'Auberge Espagnole. Okay, yes, I've seen this. Um, <laughs> I think it's just a movie that marked a whole generation, uh, yeah. including mine. Yeah. Uh, so it's about Xavier, he goes on student exchange in Europe, we call it Erasmus. Yeah. Um, he goes to Barcelona and he's in a colloc, yeah. like shared house. Flat sharing. So yeah. And Anyway, in the film, uh, the experience really changes all of his uh, life goals and his career. Mm. And I think the message of the film is that traveling broadens your mind. Yeah. I think you would agree on that. Yes. <laughs> and um, I just think if you have the chance, anyone should try and go and study abroad or work abroad at least once in your life to... Yeah. To be on the expat side. Yeah, to and be the outsider. Yeah. So what's the lucky last on the list? Number five. The last one is not a French film, but it's in French. 
Okay. Although I think French people might need subtitles for it because it's French Canadian. Okay. Yeah. And the accent is really strong. But I wanted to have it on the list because it's the movie that made us want to start Lost in Translation. Yeah. It's called Mummy. Oh, I've seen this. It was wonderful. Yeah. From Xavier Dolan. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone was talking about the movie, and yeah. me and Matt we were like, oh, we need to see this movie. But it was just showing with French subtitles. Mm. And we went through like 10 pages of Google results yeah. and couldn't find it. So we were so sad. We had to wait until the DVD was released to watch it together it's like a slap in your face like we would say in french when you come yeah. out of the movie you laugh you cry it's about this uh, mother and son relationship and the son has um mm. adhd yeah hyperactivity yeah and um i think it's a it's it's a real masterpiece and the yeah. soundtrack uh, you know Celine Dion. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just so great to see them singing that yeah um and i would highly recommend to check out all of xavier Dolan's films uh, he's one of the greatest directors, in my opinion, like Laurence Anyways, uh, J'ai tué ma mère, Juste la fin du monde, mm. uh, Les Amours Imaginaires, equally great. Okay, <laughs> so he's a genius. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope you guys have liked this little insight into French cinema, recommendations from someone who obviously knows a lot <laughs> about French cinema. Let's tell you how you can also win the tickets and the poster as well. So, we were thinking... Um, that if you head to the Lost in Translation Facebook page, the first 10 people to message Manon saying that they came from this video will win the tickets, mm -hmm. and the person who comes first will have the poster as well, and you can pick it up at your next Lost in Translation event. Let us know what your favorite French films are down below, or we'll check those out, and otherwise we'll see you guys in the next video. A bientôt! A bientôt! <laughs>